Now let's talk about the second application of the entropy principle that is the mixing of two fluids. So this is one system that you see. Okay. And uh, this is an adiabatic enclosure. All right. So no heat can flow across the system boundary. Okay. Now we have divided this complete system into two subsystems. So this is subsystem one and this is subsystem two. In subsystem one, we have a fluid of mass M1, temperature T1 and specific heat capacity C1. And in subsystem two, we have a another fluid of mass M2, temperature T2 and specific heat capacity C2. So this means both the fluids are of different nature because the material property is different C1 and C2. Okay. And uh, we assume that uh, this T1 is higher than T2. Now both the fluids are kept separate with the help of this partition and inside an adiabatic enclosure. Now when you remove this partition, what will happen? They will start mixing each other. Okay. So when fluid one will mix with fluid two. Okay. When they start mixing with each other, uh, both the, uh, no, the, this mixing will actually uh, result in an equilibrium state and that equilibrium state would be uh, actually defined by the equilibrium temperature. So let us say the equilibrium temperature that is attained after mixing after mixing is complete and let us say that is Tf and Tf is a value which lies within the temperature range of T2 and T1. So it is between T2 and T1. Okay. So this is like that if T1 is let us say 100 degrees Celsius and T2 is let us say 20 degrees Celsius. So when you mix water at 100 with water at 20, you get the final mixture at let us say 45. And this will also depend upon the mass of the two fluids, right? Now, since this energy interaction is exclusively confined to the two fluids, there is no heat coming in or out. All right. The system is isolated. So you can say whatever heat that is lost by one, the same amount of heat is being gained by two. So you can say that M1 C1, T1 minus Tf, this is the amount of heat that is lost by uh, fluid 1 and this is equal to M2 C2 Tf minus T2. So this is the amount of heat gained by fluid 2. So from this equation, I can find out the value of Tf. Okay, so if you uh, start with this, so you will get M1 C1 T1 minus m1 c1 tf is equal to m2 c2 tf minus m2 c2 t2 okay i need to find tf so you will have m1 c1 plus m2 c2 into tf is equal to m1 c1 t1 plus m2 c2 T2. So the value of Tf will be equal to M1 C1 T1 plus M2 C2 T2 upon M1 C1 plus M2 C2. So this is the value of Tf that we get by assuming that whatever heat lost by uh, fluid 1 is the same as the amount of heat gained by fluid 2. Now let's find out the entropy change for subsystem 1. Okay. So the entropy change for subsystem 1 would be delta S1. Isn't it? And this would be equal to dQ reversible upon T. And the temperature ranges from T1 to Tf. Let me rewrite it. 
T1 to Tf. Okay, and this is equal to integral T1 to Tf. Now the reversible heat interaction is M1 C1 dt upon T. So this would become M1 C1 natural log Tf upon T1. So this is the amount of entropy change for subsystem 1. Okay. Now these are in degree Celsius but we need to convert them into Kelvin. So the value final of this would be M1C1 natural log Tf plus 273 by T1 plus 273. Now after this let's find out the entropy change for subsystem 2. Now going by the similar calculations I will straight away write down that it will be equal to M2, M2C2 natural log T2 or you can say Tf, sorry Tf by T2 because the temperature changes from T2 to Tf and this can be further written as M2C2 log Tf plus 273 converting it to Kelvins and T2 plus 273. Okay, now let's move ahead a bit. Now if you look at delta S1, this would be negative. Why this would be negative? Because Tf is less than T1. So the you will be finding out the log of a number which is less than 1. So it will be a negative value. Okay. And if you look at this, this would be positive because Tf is greater than T2. So you'll be finding out the log of a fraction which is greater than 1. So it will be a positive value. Okay. Now if you find out, if you find out the delta S universe, this is equal to delta S1 plus delta S2. Okay. And this is equal to M1C1 log Tf by T1 plus M2C2 log Tf by T2. Okay. Now this whole value would be a definite positive value. Now how can we say that? Because we know that the mixing process is basically an irreversible process. You cannot reverse the mixing process to its initial states. Okay, so this would be this would be a definite positive because mixing is an irreversible process. Mixing is an irreversible process. Okay, so you need to understand this and note it down. Now, although the mixing process is irreversible, to evaluate the entropy change for the subsystems, the irreversible path is let us say replaced by a reversible path on which the integration is performed. So this integration that you're performing is on a reversible path just for the sake of calculations. Okay, so don't get confused that why we are taking reversible over here because this integration can only be performed if you have a reversible path. So we are, you know, just changing the irreversible path by the reversible path for this calculation sake. Now, Let's take a small corollary of the same thing that if the mass values are same, all right, let us say it is equal to M and both the fluids are also same. So C1 is equal to C2 is equal to C. Now in this case, if you find out the delta S universe, this would come about to be M into C natural log Tf square upon T1, T2. Okay, and the value of Tf would be simply T1 plus T2 upon 2. So these things change if 
in both the subsystems the mass becomes same and the value of uh, specific capacity also becomes equal okay now if you replace this over here the final value or the value that you should use becomes delta s universe is equal to is equal to this becomes equal to 2 into m into c into natural log of t1 plus t2 by 2 upon upon so you have t1 t2 okay i can write this down as under root t1 t2 right so this is what you get after substituting the above values in the delta s universe equation now this value is always positive now why is this positive because this is the arithmetic mean of the two numbers that is t1 t2 and this is the geometric mean of the two numbers t1 and t2 and we always know that the arithmetic mean of two numbers is greater than the geometric mean of the two numbers so this means this fraction is greater than one and the log of a value which is more than one is always positive and the entire value then becomes positive okay so this is uh, the end of the second application of the entropy principle that was the mixing of two fluids so i hope you understood this uh, explanation of the process so the uh, you know formulas to remember is this this is one formula that you should remember the value of tf okay based upon the principle of the heat gained is equal to heat loss and then you should always remember the value of the delta s universe that is this and a special case which is when the values of mass and the specific heat capacities become equal now let's move on to the next video and talk about the maximum work obtainable from two finite bodies at temperature T1 and T2.